So when I was 12 years old, um, I ran away from home due to the fact that my father was coming to pick me up from my mom's house because the school had called him saying that I wore a short skirt to school. So I ran away for two days. And when I came back home, I looked for my mom. My mom was no longer home. I went around the corner to two people who my mother and I used to go to church with. When I told them that my mother wasn't home, they said, okay, you can stay with us. Time passed. I checked on, checked to the house every day to see if my mom was there, and she still wasn't home. And the couple who took me in, they eventually, I'm gonna say like probably like two weeks had passed, and they said that they had something to tell me. And they told me that they were my biological parents. This was easy for me to believe because I didn't like my father. I couldn't stand my father. I hated him, really. Now I'm trying to get familiar with this new family that I am supposedly had missed out on. And they're intro introducing me to their cousins, nieces, nephews, bringing baby pictures saying that it's me as a baby. And the family seems to go along with it because they're saying, oh, we missed you. We, I can't believe you're so grown now. And that shit was a lie. <laughs> Everything was a lie. This family was not my family. I would stay the night at this house and they would never stay there. There was this guy, had, he had mental illness and I could feel him breathing over me at nighttime. He would never, he didn't touch me, but I could feel him breathing over me, like watching me. One day, my cousin asked me if I wanted to smoke some weed with him. And the guy comes out, the guy who had mental illness comes out and tells the, my cousin um, that my parents said that I'm not supposed to be outside. So I seen Midnight coming over there with a belt and I ran upstairs and he started whipping me with the belt buckle. He bust my lip, my lips swelled up like two times larger than what my lips already are. He was screaming at me saying, you know what they were gonna do? They was gonna run a train on you. You wanna be a hoe, I'm gonna teach you how to be a hoe. And Candy, she started to wave a needle over the fire to get the pus out of my lip. And she started poking the needle in my lip and was squeezing my lip. Pus, blood everywhere, I'm crying. Telling them, mommy, I'm sorry, daddy, I'm sorry. And he says to me, you wanna be a hoe? I'm gonna teach you how to be a hoe. And he started ripping my clothes off and he got on top of me and was like, Daddy's gonna teach you how to be up since that's what you wanna be. And he raped me. I started screaming, Daddy, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Like, I just fell asleep while he was raping me. And the next morning, I'm waking up, my body doesn't feel right, and she's giving me oral sex. The woman who's supposed to be my mother is giving me oral sex. And I had an orgasm. Like, it made me feel, it made me feel dirty because it's like, sometimes it makes me feel like, growing, when I was growing up, I questioned myself, like, if I'm gay or not, you know? I just felt like killing myself. A girl that my mother and I used to live with came around the corner. I was around the corner from my house. You hear what I'm saying? I was not states away. I was not in another country. And my biological father didn't even come look for me. <laughs> didn't even come. He didn't 
say anything. When a girl went back to my real house, I guess she told her mother, and they called the police. The police came to the store where I was at. When the police were taking me away, I still screamed for midnight, Daddy, don't let them take me away. My biological father didn't even ask me anything. He didn't say anything. He didn't ask me, where have you been? Because his initial thought is, yes, I did run away. But she didn't even ask, where were you? He didn't ask at all. And still, to this day, my biological father told him to take me to the institution. And that's what they did. Going to the psychiatrist and talking to counselors and having therapy. Yeah, they told me that I was rape, you know. But this man was like a father to me. I feel he's more concerned about my well-being than my own father. It's not like it's the first time that I was raped. It wasn't even the second time. I felt like it was normal. I felt that something was wrong with me, something that I wasn't doing right. There was this guy I was dating, and one one day he was kicking that outdoor, and um, I let him in because I wanted him to get his stuff and leave. But of course, I didn't want him to leave. And um, he was choking me out on my kitchen floor. And my son was calling the police on him. And he ran over to my son, was trying to snatch the phone out of my son's hand. And I just kept hitting him in his face, kept hitting him in his face. <laughs> Pulled him off my son, grabbed my son. And I said to him, I said, look, look how you have my son. And he said, well, what about me? I said, what about you? And the police came and they took him away. That, that was like the last straw for me. Do what you may want to do to me. But when you touch my children, I have no understanding. Like, it's like a blackout mode. Like, I'm ready to explode. To my survivors, hoorah. <laughs> yeah, another day that you stood strong. You didn't, you didn't fall for anything. Another day that you're an example for our victims. Victims. Don't feel like that's the only way. <laughs> there are people out here that will help you to get out of that situation. You have your sisters, you have your brothers that will actually stand with you, help you, protect you. And to my abusers, I know you've been hurt too. I know you're hurting. Hurt people hurt people. You can get help too. Domestic violence is real as well as mental illness, as well as self-hate, as well as self-love. It's real. Who is Ashley? Even to this day, I question that. Ashley is a fighter. Ashley doesn't give up. Ashley is a work in progress. And I am a survivor.